Hello, I'm Linda Patterson. I am honored to present the workshop on Floor Painters, a Legacy of Value to All Organists. My teacher of Floor Painters was very popular, especially in the United States from the 1930s to the early 1980s. But since his death in 1986, after I studied with him, his pieces have been less frequently performed, less frequently programmed and studied. I have been astounded that young colleagues have not known of his pieces and I've been in a race against time to interview as many of his students to learn what their memories and what their favorite pieces were and to learn more about his work. Since I presented a workshop in 2014, I've gone to the archives of his management company and his publisher, as well as his own archives that were donated to the Royal Library in Brussels. And I have learned so much. It is fascinating and he's a fascinating person. So I'm hoping that by teaching you a little bit about him and some of the very interesting things about this very large personality and wonderful teacher that you'll be interested in doing more of his pieces. The question I get most frequently is what is his name and how is it pronounced and it's Floor Paters. He's published by Edition Peters. His principal publisher was Edition Peters. He has pieces for everyone. He has very accessible pieces and a three volume set Ars Organi, uh, a method book. There is something for everyone. Dissonant, tonal, modal, based on chant, based on hymn tunes, and free works. I'll tell you first about his life. He was born in 1903, and nearby, that was the year that the Catholic Church had a significant conference in which Gregorian chant was affirmed as the highest music for the church. His father was a church organist, his brother was a church organist, and he became a church organist substituting for them early in life. Then went on to study at the Le Mans Institute, the nearby conservatory, where he took the Grand Prix, the youngest to ever obtain the Grand Prix, in 1923 at 20. He became the assistant organist at the cathedral in Mechelen, for his teacher, and in 1925, when his teacher died, he became the professor of organ at the institute as well as the principal organist at the cathedral in Mechelen. It's so inspiring to me that he stayed in that position, that same position from 1925 until the year of his death, 1986, and continuing into his 80s is an amazing feat for one organist to stay at one cathedral with music styles changing over the decades and clergy changing he remained he continued to play weekly masses and he even played a brief recital weekly for visitors that came to hear the mass so he is so inspiring as a church musician uh, even more inspiring to me is that when the nazis visited with him as they began to occupy Belgium. They asked him to play for them and he would not, so they took away his passport. But that did not stop him. Even though he was a father of three young children, he still traveled regularly to his students at the Tilburg Conservatory. And he passed messages from the Cardinal in Belgium to the Bishop of Holland. He had to change to a Dutch bicycle. He was given a disguise by the resistance members in Holland at the time so that no one would discover that, that he was making frequent, regular visits. He was in grave danger every time that he left for Tilburg, but he still traveled regularly to teach his students there. In addition, he gave concerts at night in his home for members of the resistance who brought Jews in hiding to his home so that they could hear the pieces of Bach. 
again, another inspiring thing that I have read from his archives. He continued to work at all of these conservatories and all in all, he had 283 students receive diplomas at either Lillo Mons Institute, the Ghent Conservatory, the Royal Conservatory of Belgium that he became the director of as well, or the Tilburg Conservatory. In addition to many, many Fulbright students that study with him over the years and private students. And one of the important things to him was that everyone is welcome in his studio. I spoke with a man that was stud uh, studied with him while he was stationed in Germany and had nowhere to practice and felt very guilty for studying with someone so famous. Uh, but he welcomed everyone. The Belgian government set up master classes to be given every summer in his studio in Mechelen for 20 international students to come from countries that Belgium had uh, diplomatic partnerships with. And a very diverse group of students would come every year to study with him. He made each group promise that they would help each other in their career for the rest of their life. And I've stayed in contact with some of those same students from my class and my group, with one concertizing in the United States and another classmate meeting me in Belgium last year. He was very interested in having his students help each other and in these international musical exchanges. When we arrived for the master class, he checked to see which edition of the Ars Organi we brought with us. For him, it was very important that we brought the 21st edition, and I didn't understand at that point, but now I understand that he had continued to develop every year. He continued to change his ornamentation, to relearn Bach works based on the Donington ornamentation book that his American students shared with him, and his method book and his methods changed and in the 21st edition he had finally developed a conjunctive disjunctive uh, method for teaching Bach that was the, the final interpretation that he would have in his lifetime. It was so inspiring that that a teacher would continue to research, learn, and teach the latest method. As an organist, he set records. He gave 300 United States concerts, touring to all kinds of places all over the United States, small venues, large venues. He traveled the world and gave 1,200 worldwide concerts in places like the Soviet Union and Singapore when travel was much more difficult. On his concerts, he would often begin with Bach and Handel, then he wanted to, to teach audiences about the composers of the Low Countries, the area around him, the old Netherlands masters that he collected and made anthologies of, and they were included as well because Franck was a countryman of his and Belgium did not have a specific music identity. He always included Franck and some pre-Bach pieces, as well as Turnemir. Turnemir was a close friend and they had a significant correspondence and friendship. He included Dupre, he included Messiaen, Vierne, and Vidor. And I told you about his love for the works of Franck and Bach. Uh, he was able to inherit Franck's consul from Saint Clotilde, and here is a photograph of it as it was lovingly displayed in his home studio. As a composer, he composed 500 pieces. He was the composer of the largest collection of organ preludes by a single composer that have ever been published. It was a 24 volume set published by Edition Peters, and this is the catalog of the volumes as they were first presented. 
that was about his third set of organ pieces by um, using American hymn tunes. He started with the opus 68 through 70, then the short preludes, opus 95, that I would recommend right now for live streaming that we are doing. Opus 95 pieces are short, accessible, and recognizable hymn tunes. And finally, the, the record setting set of 24 volumes, 213 preludes. And, and it is a wonderful set that covers every possibility for the liturgical year in the 24 volumes. Walter Henriksen was his publisher at Edition Peters, and he asked that they be not too long, not too difficult, and not too modern. And it is a wonderful set, and I hope that you investigate some of these possibilities for church work. Again, for recitals, in my attached introduction to his works, you'll see some fantastic recital pieces as well. In conclusion, I hope that this has sparked some interest in a composer who's now being overlooked, who has great merit, and he remained popular with everyone that met him or studied with him over his long, long teaching career, church music career, and concert career. I hope that you will check out his own recordings and listen to him play on Spotify and dive in. Thank you very much.